We're continuing with chapter 19, which is about confidence intervals for proportions. Yesterday in the video, we created a confidence interval for the actual percentage of sea fans that were infected with some kind of disease. Uh, we found out that our interval was from 42.1% to 61.7%, and we calculated that by adding and subtracting two times our standard error. So we claimed that we had a certain confidence, 95%, that the true proportion of all infected C fans was in between our confidence interval. So we again calculated that by taking our sample proportion, which is P hat, and adding and subtracting two times our standard error. The extent of the interval on either side of our sample proportion is called the margin of error, which will be abbreviated as ME. In general, a confidence interval looks as follows. It's your estimate, so in our case our sample proportion, plus and minus your margin of error, where your margin of error is how many standard deviations you are from the mean times the standard error. And again, the margin of error is how far you are above and below what your sample proportion was. Continuing talking about margin of error, we're going to look now at certainty versus precision. Our margin of error for 95% confidence is two standard errors. We take our standard error and multiply it by two. That gives us our margin of error. If we wanted to be more confident, we have to make our margin of error bigger we could be 99.7% confident if we make our margin of error 3 times the standard error. So now instead of multiplying by 2, we're multiplying by 3. That makes our interval wider in that case. The more confident we are, the larger our margin of error is going to have to be, and therefore the wider our interval will be. We could be 100% confident, but the only way we can be 100% confident is if we say that some percentage of sea fans are infected. So by saying that it's between zero and 100%, then we can be 100% confident. But that doesn't help us. That's not very precise. We're very certain, but not very precise. We could be very precise and say that the number of infected sea fans is from 51.8% to 52%, but we won't be very confident of that, so we won't have a whole lot of certainty here. The trick is to have a balance between both. We want to be as certain as possible, but we also want to be as precise as possible. So the most common confidence levels that will end up being used are 90, 95, and 99%. We'll also end up using 98% as well. Um, but you can end up using any level you want. So just checking. Let's think about what a margin of error actually is and how that affects our interval. So if we think about a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of U.S. adults who may switch their vote. We did this in class and I, we said that it was from 15.5 to 20.5%. If we wanted to be 98% confident, would our confidence interval need to be wider or would it have to be more narrow? Because we're more confident, our margin of error is going to have to increase. By increasing our margin of error, our interval will have to be wider. Our margin of error was about 4%. If we wanted to reduce it, to 3%, would our level of confidence be higher or lower? So if we are making our margin of error smaller, we'll be making our interval more narrow. So our interval will be becoming more precise. And the more precise we are, the less certain we will become. So our confidence level would end up being lower. If the Gallup organization had polled more people, so our sample size was larger, would the interval's margin of error have been larger or smaller? And the answer here is larger. A larger sample size is always better. So the larger the sample size, the more accurate your sample proportion will be. So the closer you'll get to your true proportion or the actual population proportion, and the smaller our margin of error will then be. Looking at an example, your local newspaper polls a sample of 330 voters, finding 144 who say they will vote yes on the upcoming school budget. Create a confidence interval for the actual sentiment of all voters, use two standard deviations, and that should say standard errors, I'm sorry, and concentrate on the interpretation. The first thing we need to do is find out what our sample proportion is. So our sample proportion 
P hat is 144, because that's how many said yes, out of our grand total, 330. So this gives us a value of 0.436. So then Q hat is 0 0.564, and I found that by doing 1 minus 0.436. Once we find this, we need to find our standard error. So our standard error is equal to the square root of P hat times Q hat all over N, which is 330. And this gives us a value of 0 0.027. Once we find our standard error, we can find our margin of error. So our margin of error is 2 times my standard error. This gives us a margin of error of 0 0.054. Once we have our margin of error, we can then find our confidence interval. And our confidence interval, which I'm abbreviating CI, will be our p hat plus or minus our margin of error. So it will be equal to 0.436 plus or minus 0 0.054. This gives us a confidence interval of 0 0.382 to 0 0.49. So 38.2% to 49%. So this ends up being our confidence interval. But note that we want to concentrate on the interpretation. So Identifying what the confidence interval is only gets us so far. We really are focused on what does the confidence interval actually tell us. So in order to interpret it, we have to give three things. We have to give how confident we are, we have to give the interval, and we have to explain what it means in context. That in context piece is extremely important. So the way we would interpret this is by saying based on our sample, because remember, this is only based on our sample. If we were to base this on a different sample, we would get a different confidence interval. So based on our sample, we are 95% confident that between 38.2% and 49% of all voters will vote yes on the upcoming school budget. So that's how we would interpret it. Again, it needs three things. So when you are solving these problems, on a quiz or a test, your confidence interval is worth however many points, but the interpretation is worth three. You need to have your confidence level, what the interval actually is, and then what it means in context. Those three things must be provided. Critical values. So, so far we've really talked about our margin of error by being one, two, or three standard deviations from the mean. And specifically, we've really only looked at two standard deviations from the mean, but that's using our 68.95.99.7 rule. Note that the most common confidence intervals were 90, 95, and 99. Neither 90 or 99 are exactly one, two, or three standard deviations from the mean. This means that we actually have to use critical values. In our CFAN example, we use two standard errors to give us a 95% confidence interval. The number of standard errors, so that two, is called the critical value. So however many standard errors you are from your center value, your mean, or your proportion, that's your critical value. Since ours is based on the normal model, we denote it with a Z and an asterisk because that two is telling us we're two standard errors away, and the number of standard errors we are away is our Z score. Uh, we make sure that we know that it's a critical value because it gets a little asterisk at the top of the Z. For a 95% confidence interval, the precise critical value is actually 1.96. It's not exactly 2 because the normal model is an estimate, so it's approximately 2. But if we want to be more precise, and we do, it's going to be 1.96. So from here on out, we're going to use 1.96 as our critical value for a 95% confidence. What that means is that 95% of the normal model is found within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. We've been using 2 from our 68.95.99.7 rule because it's easy to remember. But for any confidence level, we can find the corresponding critical value from a computer, our calculator, or the z-score table. Because again, the critical values are just a z-score. To find the correct values, you have to use the correct cutoffs using the normal model. So for a 90% confidence interval, your critical value is 1.645.
For 98%, your critical value is 2.326, and for 99%, it's 2.576. Now, I have here a diagram showing the 90% critical value, and I want to just explain where we get these values from. So here's our normal model. A confidence interval, remember our sample proportion is in the middle, we're saying that's our mean. So our confidence interval is even on both sides. So our confidence interval is right in the middle of the normal model. So if it's in the very middle, that means we have an even percentage on this side and an even percentage on this side. So that means that the leftover percentage over here, if this is 90%, then there would be 5% over here and 5% over here because we have 10% left over total and the 90 is in the middle. So that means that to find this z-score, this cutoff value is actually 0.05. So then to find this cutoff value, the actual percentage is this 5% plus the 90% or 0.95. It is important to use the correct cutoff values. So the cutoff value is always going to be basically half of what is left over added on. For 90%, I find the z-score for the 95% cutoff. To find the critical value for 98%, I would use a cutoff value of 99. And to find the critical value for 99%, I would use a cutoff value of 99.5. Again, I'll explain this a little more in class tomorrow. But let's look at an example for now. Is equal to 0.27. Therefore, q hat is equal to 0.73, and then I can find my standard error by calculating the square root of 0.27 times 0.73 over 53, because 53 is my sample size, and I can determine that my standard error is equal to 0.061. So I'm going to need my standard error to create these three different confidence intervals. So the first confidence interval is a 95% confidence interval for the actual improvement rate. So if I'm gonna create a 95% confidence interval, again, a confidence interval is equal to your p hat plus or minus your margin of error. In this case, my p hat is 0.27. My margin of error is going to be my critical value, and for a 95% confident, my critical value is 1.96. So this will be 1.96 times my standard error of 0.061. So this becomes 0.27 plus or minus 0.12, and it gives me a confident, confidence interval of 0.15 to 0.39. The next confidence interval is a 90% confidence interval. For a 90% confidence level, our critical value is 1.645. So this time, my margin of error will be equal to 1.645 times my standard error of 0.061. This gives me a margin of error of 0.10. So then my confidence interval is equal to my sample proportion plus or minus my margin of error. So I get a conf confidence interval of 0.17 to 0.37. Note when I became less confident, my confidence interval became more narrow and became less wide. Finally, we want a 98% confidence interval. To be 98% confidence, I have to have a critical value of 2.326. So my confidence interval will be my sample proportion, plus or minus 2.326 times my standard error. Because again, this right here is my margin of error. So this becomes 0.27 plus or minus 0.142, which gives me an interval of 0.128 to 0.412. And note when I became more confident, I ended up with a wider interval. Because again, the more confident you are, the wider your interval. The less confident, the more narrow and or precise your interval is. This is all I have for today. I hope you have a great night.